Hey guys, before I get started, I just wanted to showcase you all the recruits that I have went after. And I've already offered 21 scholarships out of the 27 guys that we have on the board. Most of them are in the three to four star range because that's really what we'll go after. I mean, I have a few five stars here and there, but yeah, I just wanted to showcase them quickly before we got started. Also wanted to showcase some of the scores that were going around the top 25. We already know that KU won 69 to three, but there were some close games in the mix. I mean, Ole Miss squeaking it out over FCSEs. Michigan barely winning against Fresno State. And you got Oklahoma State beating the UGF Pandas, of course. Georgia squeaks out a win over Clemson. Missouri, a tight win over FCS Midwest. Texas losing to Colorado State was a shocker. Miami beats Florida. K-State dominates the Pandas as well. Washington wins comfortably. Alabama struggled, but they still won. And then you got Penn State beating West Virginia. And then you also have the top 25. You got Georgia at number one. Ohio State at number two, Oregon at three, Ole Miss at four, Bama at five, Penn State six, Notre Dame seven, Michigan eight, Missouri nine, Utah 10, Oklahoma 11, Tennessee 12, Arizona 13, Oklahoma State at 14, Kansas State at 15, Texas down to 16, Louisville at 17, Kansas at 18, NC State at 19, Miami at 20, LSU down to 21, USC at 22, Clemson down to 23, Florida State down to 24, and Washington squeaks into the polls at number 25. And we just have five that missed out. Iowa, Wisconsin, Kentucky, Iowa State, Michigan State, and one team dropping out, and that was Texas A&M at number 24. Now, on to the video. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Drew, better known as BrockChuck01, and welcome to episode number two of my KU Football Dynasty in EA Sports College Football 25. Last week, the 21st-ranked Kansas Jayhawks had their season opener against FCS East and blew them out of the water, winning the game 69-3, thanks in large to an incredible offensive performance, mostly by Jalen Daniels and Devin Neal. But... Defense also did some damage as well, getting five plus sacks and a pick six. Now the Jayhawks are number 18 in the country, but they have their first true road test as they head to Champaign, Illinois to take on the 0-1 Illinois Fighting Illini. Now the Illini are coming off a heartbreaking loss as they lost their season opener at home to FCS Midwest 43-38. So... A lot of things are riding on this game for Illinois to be successful. Now, this isn't the first meeting between these two as they faced off last year in Lawrence as KU won that game 34 to 23. So, can Kansas keep things going just like they did in week one and improve to 2 and 0? Or will Illinois play stunner and upset the Hawks and maybe bump them out of the top 25? Well, let's do this. It is a glorious afternoon game for the Illini here at Memorial Stadium located in Champaign as the Illini just now take the field as they get prepared to take on the 18th ranked Jayhawks. Illinois would get the ball to start the game and they would actually get some plays moving. Here it's third and four and Altmeyer drops back and he will find his receiver. It's a running back Lawferly and he'll get a first down past the 40 yard line. A couple plays later, it's second and four. Altmeyer sets up in the pistol. It's an option play and the ball pops free and Kansas recovers. It's OJ Burroughs to pick up the carom and KU gets the ball. KU looking to score first with incredible field position, but they've been struggling. It's third and 10. Daniels looks, throws, and he overthrows Trevor Wilson. And guess what? For the first time this year, Kansas would have to punt. Here is the Illini on the field again. Altmeyer looks, throws. It is caught. It'll be a first down for the Illini. And they have been playing hurry up this entire time. Well, we'll stick it here. First and 10 at the 41-yard line. 
Altmaier sends a man in motion. He looks, throws, takes a shot, but it's incomplete. Good coverage there by Kobe Bryant. Now a couple plays later, third and three for the Illini. They're trying to get to the 31-yard line. Altmaier, quick drop back, throws. It's caught by the sophomore receiver, Wilcher, but he's shy of the sticks. So they're going to bring on David Alano to kick this long field goal. Good snap, good hold, kick is up, and it is good. And Illinois strikes first. They lead it 3 to nothing. Now KU looking to regroup after being down 3 0. Daniels finds Trevor Wilson on third and four, and he gets enough to move the chains. It'll be a Jayhawk first down. The very next play, Daniels hands it off to the senior, Devin Neal, who gets it into Illinois territory, and he is past the 40 yard line for a big first down. Now, first and 10. Again, this is actually the next play. It's Daniel Hyshaw, and he gets enough to move the chains. And KU is in the red zone now. Now, on third and 10, Daniels from the gun. He's looking towards the end zone. He finds the Grim Reaper, Luke Grim for six. And Owen Piper Gertis's kick would be good after that. KU takes the lead on Illinois at 7-3. And that actually would be the end of the first quarter score. So KU with the 7-3 lead at the end of one. But Illinois put a drive together that would go deep into KU territory. And it would go all the way to the Jayhawk 19 off of that run. But the Illini decide to hurry it up. Altmaier deciding to change the play at the line of scrimmage. He will send a man in motion. Gets the snap. Has all sorts of time. Now is under pressure. And down he goes. Dylan Brooks with the sack for a big loss. And now they have third and 19. Just past the 30. And they go with a draw play. And it only picks up two. So it'll be fourth and 17. That'll bring on David Alano for a long field goal. He's already made one. Good snap. Good hold. The kick is up. And he pushed it right. He missed it. KU still holds on to that 7-3 lead. Now KU with the ball back on third and two. A quick drop back for Daniels, and he finds Jared Casey just to get enough for the first down to keep the drive moving. Now on first and 10 from the 36-yard line, Daniels will hand it off to Devin Neal, and he's got all sorts of green. He's got a first down and more. He gets all the way to the 40-yard line of Illinois, to move the chains. A couple plays later, it's second and nine from the 39. Daniel's looking to throw, and he finds Lawrence Arnold just shy of the 20 to move the chains. Daniel's already five for six for 44 yards after that. Here's third and two. Daniel's on the jet touch pass. He finds Quinton Skinner, and he'll move it all the way past the five for a first and goal. The very next play. Kansas lines up. Devin Neal gets the ball, and he will get into the end zone. It'll be another touchdown for the Jayhawks. Owen Piper Gertis's kick would be good. KU extends the lead 14-3. Now Illinois gets the ball back. Right now it's third and five from the 19. Altmaier looks. He throws. He finds his tight end over the middle, and he'll get enough to move the chains. Now it's second and five at the 32. Altmaier looks, throws. It's picked off. It's Devin Dye, and he's got green in front of him. He could take it the distance, and it's a pick six. Touchdown, Kansas. Owen Piper Gertis's kick would be good. Kansas now leads 21 to three. Illinois would get the ball back after their horrible previous series. Altmaier with the jet touch pass, and it would not be enough to move the chains as Kobe Bryant met him head on and Illinois would have to punt. First and 10 for the Hawks. Daniels looks to throw. He does and he finds Jared Casey all the way to the Illinois 40 and they would call a quick timeout because, well, there's not a lot of time in the half. Daniels on first and 10. He's going to take a shot towards the end zone and he finds Luke Grimm for the second time today. Touchdown, Kansas. Owen Piper Gertis's kick would be good, and KU extends the lead 28 to 3. In fact, Illinois would just take a knee on the last play, and that would be your halftime score. The Jayhawks would get the ball to start the second half. Here it's third and five. Daniels looking all sorts of time, rolls to his left, 
throws on the run. It's caught by Devin Neal in Illinois territory, and he has a huge first down all the way to the Illini 30. Now, a couple plays later, it's third and seven. Daniels, design draw, it heads to Neal, and he gets enough for the first down. KU is now in the red zone. Now it's second and five for KU at the 11. Daniels hands it off to Highshaw, bounces off a tackle, and he will get enough to move the chains. It'll be first and goal for KU inside the five. The next play, a direct snap to Neal, and he will bounce off tackles into the end zone for six. Touchdown, Kansas. Owen Piper Gertis' kick would be good after that. KU now extends the lead. It's 35-3. Illinois needs something to work to keep them in this ball game. Altmaier hands it off to the running back, Caden Feagan, and he gets enough to move the chains for an Illini first down. On second and four, Altmaier looks, throws, and it's almost picked off by Devin Dye again. That would have been interception number two, but it falls incomplete. And now it's third down and four. Altmaier looking to throw. He's got his tight end wide open, and he runs down the sideline and moves the chains into KU territory. Now, it's second and four at the 38. Altmaier changing the play. It'll be a handoff to Caden Feagan up the gut, and it's a first down for Illinois. They got themselves a drive going. First and 10. Altmaier sends Feagan in motion. He's looking. He throws. He's got a man wide open in the back of the end zone. It's Wiltshire. Touchdown, Illinois. David Alano's kick is good. Illinois now trails KU 35-10. That was also the first touchdown that the KU defense gave up. Here is second and three, and it's Devin Neal bouncing off some tackles, and he will move the chains for a KU first down. Now a couple plays later, second and six. Daniels looks to throw. He finds Trevor Wilson, and he gets to the 45-yard line to move the chains once again for Kansas. A couple plays later after that, third and eight. Daniels looks, finds Trevor Wilson again, and this time he has a first down into Illinois territory. And that would actually end the third quarter as Kansas holds on to a 35-10 advantage. Kansas at the 41 handoff to Neal he gets to the outside cuts in and will spin off the tackle and get the first down all the way to the 29 the very next play Daniels looking looking finds Neal over the middle it's a first down and KU is in the red zone at the 18 yard line now it's second and seven and you remember the saying all things must come to an end well, this drive ends badly as Daniels was picked off by Caleb Patterson, and he has no one in front of him. He could go all the way. 90-yard pick six, and Illinois has a sign of life. David Alano's kick would be good after that. Illinois only trails 35-17. to So Kansas has given up 14 straight points. Now... Skinner on the jet pass will get just enough for a first down to keep the drive moving. The very next play, Daniels sends Jared Casey in motion. It's a handoff to Neal. He fights forward, and he doesn't get enough for a first down, and it will be second and inches on the very next play. Why not go back to the run game, but this time go to your power back. It's Daniel Highshaw, and he'll get enough to move the chains for a first down. Now, on first and 10, just shy of the 45, Daniels will hand it off to Neal. He will go outside of the tackles, and he will get enough to move it into Illinois territory for a first down. KU after a loss of one on second and 11. Daniels looking, throws, finds Lawrence Arnold over the middle, and it will be a first down catch, and it will move the chains, and the clock will continue to run. First and 10, Daniels hands it off, and Highshaw ends up going backwards. It's a loss of two. NC Sledge on the stop. Second and 12, handoff goes to Neal. He will bounce it outside of the 20 on a juke move. He's now at the 10, and he will be just short of the five-yard line. It'll be first and goal for Kansas. The very next play, Daniels, quick drop, 
finds Quentin Skinner, and he bounces off tackles, and he's in for six. That's JD Six's third touchdown pass of the game. Owen oh, Piper Curtis's kick would be good. KU now extends the lead. It's 42 17. It might be enough that the game is out of reach, but Altmeyer wants to keep Illinois' drive moving as he completes that one to his receiver for a first down. Now it's second and three at the 34. Altmeyer looking, throws, got his receiver over the middle. It's a first down, and Illinois calls a timeout. Now on second and 10, Altmeyer under pressure rolls, and he will throw this one away as he avoids a sack, and it'll now be third down and 10. Altmeyer claps his hands, chest high snap, looking, going deep, and it's almost picked off. It was deflected by Kobe Bryant and Marvin Grant, and it's fourth and 10. The Illini decide to go for it. Altmeyer throws deep, and it's incomplete, batted down by Melo Dotson, and it's a turnover on downs. And the Hawks will get it back with incredible field position. First and 10, it's a jet touch pass to Quinton Skinner, bounces outside to the 25, and he's just shy of the 20, but it will move the chains for a Jayhawk first down. A couple plays later on second and six, they go back to the jet touch pass to Quinton Skinner. He gets the first down, and he's all the way to the seven-yard line. It'll be first and goal. Now, KU on that set first and goal. Handoff to Daniel Hyshaw. He gets a couple, and he'll move it to the four. On the next play, second and goal at the four. Daniels in the pistol. Handoff to Devin Neal, and he will get into the end zone untouched. Touchdown, Kansas. Owen Piper Gerditz's kick would be good. KU extends the lead. It's now 49 to 17. The Illini are trying to get something out of nothing, even with the limited amount of time. As it's first and 10, Altmeyer finds Wilcher down the sideline, and he's nearing the 50 yard line for a first down. So the drive continues the very next play. Altmeyer looking, looking, throws towards the sideline. And somehow it's caught by Wilcher, and he has a first down to the 40. Well, 18 seconds left in the game. Altmeyer drops back under pressure. Down he goes. It's Dylan Brooks who met him head on, and that is a sack for a loss of 12. And the clock actually continues to run. 3 2 1. The time expires. It's a heave towards the end zone, and it's batted down, and it's incomplete, and KU wins it. 49 to 17. They move to 2 0 after the win. Another incredible performance by this offense as KU neared 500 yards of total offense. However, the defense did give up 17 points, but the turnover battle was in favor of KU as KU was plus one on the day. Also, with his one and a half sacks in this game, Dylan Brooks would actually be the Big 12 Defensive Player of the Week as well as the National Defensive Player of the Week. So congratulations to Brooks. Alrighty, that's going to do it for this episode. We'll be back with week three as we will host UNLV, who is undefeated as well. Don't forget to leave a like, comment, share, and subscribe, and push that notification bell. Tell your friends about these videos, and I should see you again when the next one comes out. But until then, have a good day. Never bring exotic dancers to the Fieldhouse, and I'll catch you on the flip side. Peace.